What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I hope you like this video. This is your review for Love and Marriage Detroit, Season 1, Episode... I don't even know this episode. What episode we on? Episode 9. So, honestly, at this point, you guys, uh, we still outside with the guys arguing over whether... Uh, what's that man named Tyreek is going to be a part of the showcase or not. Now, Brandon, here's where I'm mad at you, Brandon. You were adamant. You put your foot down. You said absolutely not. He cannot be a part of it. He's been poaching my artist. Although I found out later on that I think you're really mad about the fact that he had a whole situation going on with your, with your wife, which is valid as well. Um, you have every right to not want to bring the hen into the chicken coop. Okay. But. Then Brandon come back up off of it and was like, I think about it. No, you won't. See, here's my issue. You meant what you said the first time, which means that y'all need to stand here and resolve it. And y'all got two mediators there. You have Russell, you got Bravo that's listening and letting y'all figure it out. But y'all should have resolved it because you didn't change your mind. You meant what you said. You did not want this man to be a part of the showcase. And you have every right. Again, if this is an equal part, I do feel like you had every right to feel that way. And Anthony, you don't need to be bringing people in without... And see, again, Brandon, you knew you were being messy. You absolutely knew you were being messy. You knew that that man had a problem with that man. And now for you to stand there and act like you're going to stand 10 toes down on it, child, anyway. So moving on, the ladies decided they moving forward. They in a good space and they going to move forward. Even though... Christina says, I still feel like I need to talk to Latoya because I still feel like, you know, that there's some things left unsaid between me and Latoya. See, here's my issue with these reality shows. Child, y'all argued, y'all fussed, y'all talked, y'all resolved it. Can we move on? Like, at this point, I think Dr. Latoya was clear in her issue. And can we just move forward? I'm just sick of it. Anyway. So we have our final dinner. They brought in a chef. The dinner looked really nice. They played a little a little game, which was fun. It wasn't messy, which, again, I can appreciate. You know, it was one of those games where everybody asked a question. They put it in a box, and then they asked each other. So I appreciate the fact that it didn't get messy. Um, they were talking about sex and that kind of stuff. It was fun, though. It was real light. After dinner, the guys sort of went to bed. The ladies were outside. And, again, Christina asked Latanya, does she have a problem with me? Um, and I feel like Latanya said the same thing she done said the last three times y'all talked about it. Like, we're good. I think that, you know, you know, I just had a problem with the way things went down as far as you and, um, um, Kobe were concerned, but you guys have worked through it. And so I'm good if you good. And she was like, I mean, I guess, but I still feel like there's a problem with me and Latanya. Girl. I just, you know, sometimes when people do stuff to you, I think, I don't know what people want. Like, what do you want? She still feels the way she feels. She's just, at this point, she said what she said, and she's willing to move forward from it. She still feels how she feels. She's not going to change her opinion on how she felt about the way Christina handled the situation with Kobe. Now, I know that Christina is like, well, she just assumes the worst. She makes it seem like everything is my fault. And she doesn't put anything on anybody else. I get that. That's fine. But she explained it to you. The problem is you don't like her explanation. But at the end of the day, it's not going to change. That's how she feels. That is her explanation. It's not going to change. Anyway, child, moving on. Um, so everybody go back home, child. And now we got to get ready. So the two things we see, we see Brandon and his mama. Look. I'm going to go on and knock this thing out real easy and real quick because I feel like this was, I feel like, do I feel like Brandon and his mom have legitimate issues? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Do I feel, his mom looked very uncomfortable. I feel like his mom only did that for Brandon. So we see him going over her house for, it's her birthday and she made him his favorite cake. We find out, um, that Brandon is biracial, his mom is white, and his dad is black. His dad, um, we know his dad passed away recently, but him and his mom were together, and then they got divorced. And, you know, he was like, you know, it was hard growing up in the hood with a white mom. She was like, well, it was hard being white in the hood. Like, I had my struggles with the situation, too. Oh, he was like, I know, I mean, I know, but, you know, I mean... You know, we're just not real affectionate with each other. I mean, you know, we just don't, we don't tell each other we love each other. And, you know, we don't talk 
regularly. And his mama was like, look, um, we ain't gonna never be that. Like, I'm good. Like, she was like, I'm good with our relationship the way it is. Like, I don't see nothing wrong with it. And he was like, well, would you be willing to go to therapy? And she was like, I mean, I'll go. What? Like, she, I, and, and you could tell that she was really sort of like, taken aback like she was really sitting there like i'm not even understanding what this is all about but she did agree to go to therapy and we did see them go to a therapy session um but i really feel like the mama don't understand what the issue is and to be honest the things that brandon was bringing up wasn't even the things that christina was having that, that christina talked about christina talked about the fact that basically brandon is spoiled and was never held accountable and was allowed to do whatever he wanted to do which rolls over into how he is as a husband and the fact that clearly there have been some problems between Christina and the mom and Brandon has not had her back. You talking about stuff, you going back to your childhood and y'all don't tell each other y'all love each other. Like, again, that doesn't mean that y'all don't have, that that's not a legitimate issue where Brandon is concerned. But I'm just like, Deborah Cox, how do we get here? Nobody's supposed to be here. Now, the other side of this whole situation, we have Anthony getting ready for this man's march. Now, let me say this. A couple of things I'm going to say about this. First of all, they brought Marceau in from the Real Housewives. Uh, I mean, phew, I said Real Housewives. From Love and Marriage Huntsville. And we know Marceau Scott is on Love and Marriage Huntsville. Now, allegedly, he's Bravo's friend. They know each other. And then Bravo brought him in to talk to Anthony to be a part of the men's march situation. And, of course, you know... Marceau had to give his whole speech about black men and how, you know, we're not, you know, held up to be entrepreneurs and this, that, and the other, and, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, so Anthony's going to have this, this, this march. I'm just going to tell you that I'm, I'm just really confused at this whole situation. I'm confused. Um, I have no idea what I, I do. Let me not say that. I do understand the goal. Like, Anthony actually did have a mission statement that he read um, before the march. So once I heard the mission statement, I did understand what the mission was. I guess what I didn't understand was how were you going to achieve the mission? That's what I didn't understand. Um, so at first, you know, they made a big deal. You know, production child. They made a big deal about nobody showing up. It was raining outside and nobody was there. At one point, it was more women there than men. And then, of course, Christina couldn't come. Brandon shows up, it's raining outside, and then all of a sudden, here come the guys, right? One by one by one. They all come in at the same time, but like one by one by, you know. I said, production had all their asses standing in a room somewhere and just, you know, just be dramatic because at first it looked like nobody was going to show up. Now, to be clear, it still was only about two dozen people there, okay? It still wasn't a whole groundswell of people. And then they, by this time, by the time they went through their program, Marceau spoke, um, Dr. Latanya's dad spoke, they prayed, they had the whole breaking the chains. It seemed like everybody was there was, was a friend or family member of Anthony's. And then they went on this march. And it seemed like they just walked around the, the block. They didn't have no signage. They had no chant. I'm just not sure what they were doing. I, I I just didn't know. Now, again, there is a mission statement, and it was about, you know, entrepreneurship and, and voting. and But then it said, and men's issues. Now, I think that's an open-ended statement. When you say men's issues, I need, I do need a little more clarity on what men's issues are. But I guess I'm not a man, and that's for y'all secret meetings. I don't know. Um, But... It really just felt like something Anthony threw together for the purposes of having a storyline to film. Because it just, it just, nobody knew what the hell was going on. Now, at one point, I did feel like Brandon was being a little shady. But Brandon was saying what a lot of other people were standing there thinking. You could see it in their eyes that they was all thinking the same thing. What the hell are we doing? But neither here nor there. Child, that was the episode. I tried to stretch this thing out to 10 minutes. I can't even get 10 more minutes out of this, okay? I mean, I can't even get 10 minutes out of this. That's all I have. Um, I don't even know, you know, how many more episodes we got on? Anyway, let me know what you guys think. I'll I talk to y'all later. Peace.